it is time for my April wrap up. I read seven books this month. Here is the stack. Let's go through them. I filmed quite a few different themed videos this month, which you won't have seen all of them yet. So there's some videos coming that feature a couple of these for reading vlogs and there's maybe some already out. I think. So the first book that I finished in April is A Thousand Country Roads by Robert James Waller. This is the second book to The Bridges of Madison County, which is one of my favourite books of all time. Both are very short. The first book is about a fleeting affair between a National Geographic photographer and a woman who's in an unhappy marriage. Usually I don't go for books with affair themes in them. I don't like glorified cheating. This book series is just something else. I think the the passion for photography in it was something also that swayed me, but just the passion that these two characters have for each other. So this is the second book, and the way I would describe this is, you know when you've read a really big book series, and then you get to the end of that series, and you just kind of want a nice wholesome book at the end of it, just showing you the nice ways that all your favourite characters ended up? That's what this book does, but for one previous book. Like, there's only one book before this, but it just gives you an overview of what actually happens after this fleeting affair and in between the events at the end of The Bridges of Madison County. So this is kind of like a middle book that takes place within the events of Bridges of Madison County, but after the main bulk of the story. That probably makes no sense if you've not read this book. I would say The Bridges of Madison County is split up into two different time periods and this book takes place in the middle of those two different time periods. That's a better way to describe it. I don't want to tell you too much about the details of this, but this had just as much passion in it, just as much beauty, just as much emotion and just raw emotion. The first book did such a good job of capturing that and just made me feel very emotional and this book made me feel the same. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars and I really enjoyed it, which is no surprise given how much I love the first one. I continued on with my One Piece read next. This is the second volume, so this is One Piece by Achiro Oda, and this is a series that I am going to be slowly making my way through because it's definitely not a small series. This is a very big manga series, but this follows Luffy on his journey to become the king of the pirates. Luffy is a very funny character who I just find very entertaining. He's slowly picking up his pirate crew in this book as he was in the first book and he's just establishing himself within the pirate community and he's just so optimistic and I love that and I love that he's just so- anyone that meets him is so taken by that side of him and I just think he's just a good fun character to follow because of, of those personality traits that he has and I just really enjoy this series because of that. I- this is my first manga series that I've I really started getting into reading and I'm very excited to see where it continues to go. A couple of people have asked if I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to the video I did where I was reading manga for the first time. I'll pop that up here if you would like to check that out. I don't have like a specific manga vlog planned as such but I was just going to kind of include reading these in general reading vlogs. If you would like a specific vlog, let me know, but at the moment they're just going to be in like normal reading vlogs, but I really enjoyed this one, I'm really enjoying this series, and I gave this four out of five stars. Then I read Wild by Cheryl Strayed. This <laughs> book, this is a non-fiction, and I actually listened to the audiobook for this, which I would highly recommend. This follows Cheryl, who has had a monumental loss, and is off the back of that taking on the PCT, which is the Pacific Crest Trail, which runs from the border of Mexico up to the border of Canada through America. It's a humongous hike that takes around three months to complete, and this is following one woman's journey to completing that hike. You will see more about this in a reading vlog coming very, very soon, but I thought this was absolutely phenomenal. The journey that we see in this book is just amazing. It's intertwined with Cheryl looking back on her life up to this point and the current journey that she's on to do the PCT. It's incredibly emotion emotional. The, the fact that everything is being powered by the loss of her mum and how she's experiencing that grief and what she wants to achieve for herself and the direction she wants her life to go in is incredibly emotional and just heartbreaking at times. This is not an easy journey for her, but my god is it an amazing one. The film for this, Reese Witherspoon is in the film for this, is just fantastic as well. I actually watched the film before reading the book, but oh my gosh, both are brilliant. The film is very, very true to the book, which I really appreciated. This is essentially about one woman's struggle and journey to complete this challenge, but also to kind of deal with her own grief and see how she has changed as a person as well. 
I thought it was phenomenal. I want to reread it already. And I think even if you're not someone that necessarily reaches for nonfiction, you, you probably would enjoy this because of the way it's written. I don't want to say this reads like a fiction because obviously this is very real and very much ingrained in something that actually happened to somebody. But the writing style is just so nice and so easy to read that it, it just flows in a similar way to how a fiction flows. I gave this five out of five stars. It was great. I had a really good month of reading this month, actually. Just generally, this has been a great reading year. I think I'm really honing in my reading taste and what I know I enjoy. So the next book I read is The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. This is great fun, really, really good fun. This is set in a world where there's these literature agents and literature tech and this whole, like, different, bibliophile world where you can go into the pages of books and there's these crimes being committed around this and this follows our main character who is getting swept up in the middle of this as a detective on the off the back of somebody stealing something very important and her having to investigate into this and gets she gets involved in this big villainous storyline i probably did a really crap job of explaining that this is a whole series this is the first book it's filled with fantastic little moments it's got great references to literature it's got a great passion for literature so many cool inventions as well that i really enjoyed reading about this is actually set in an alternate version of swindon as well which isn't too far from me and i actually bought this book in swindon so it's perfect and it's really cool to to see that area and to see so many local nods to me as well. There was a really niche local thing to me mentioned in this book and I got really excited seeing that as well so just generally this ticked so many boxes for me and kept me thoroughly entertained and it was just very funny fun, creative and escapist. So I gave it four out of five stars. Then I read Changeling by Matt Wesolowski. This is actually the third book in a series, but I read this essentially as a standalone. This was a book I read for episode three of Cover to Cover. I will pop a link to that up here if you would like to watch it and get more of my thoughts on this book. So this was recommended to me by the booksellers in Burt's Books in Swindon, which is where I also bought this. This is a fictional book but it reads like a true, ki true crime podcast being recorded. The theme of this series is that the narrator has true crime cases and they investigate them by interviewing six different people to form six stories to get an overall grasp of this one story. So this specific book is following the case of a young boy who went missing in this forest area when he was with his dad being driven back home from seeing his mum. So we get these six different stories and how they all intertwine together. It's very cleverly pieced together. And at, st at the start of it, I actually started this again. So I started it once and I wasn't really getting into it and I wasn't really clicking with the format because it's very much live recording format and we get to see the narrator's thought process and then we get to see the interviews happening in a live way as much as a book can feel like that. And I wasn't really gelling with the format. And then I took a couple of days break, I went back to it, I started it again, and I couldn't put it down. So it ended up being incredibly gripping. If you are a fan of true crime podcasts or you like anything like that, I think this will be for you. It had a kind of element, obviously, it's called the Changeling or Changeling, it, it had that kind of element to it as well, and this questioning of this fantasy side of things kind of being brought into it which was really cool as, as well as like being very much grounded in, in reality at the same time it had a good blend of things to it and i really enjoyed this i gave it four out of five stars next up i read m train by patty smith this was another one i was doing for a reading vlog so many reading vlogs happening this vlog i don't think will be live yet but again coming very very soon when you are watching this video. This is another non-fiction. I'm trying to read a little bit more mix of non-fiction and fiction at the moment, but this basically follows Patti Smith's life, her travels, her career, her creativity, and a lot of different stories that she's picked up along the way. This I was reading for a very specific reason, and you'll see that in the vlog. And for that reason, I did get some interesting stuff out of it, but I, I found this wasn't quite for me. I wanted a bit more from it, and I did really enjoy how we saw the passion for creativity coming from Patti Smith. I think that was just very clearly shown. I think as I was listening to this as an audiobook, I didn't quite gel with it for that reason, possibly, as well. I did like it. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars, so it was kind of sitting middle ground for me. I liked it, but I didn't love it as much as other books that I'd read this month. I think that's probably a good way of putting it. I think that the stories were fantastic, the creativity and the passion for creativity I really enjoyed, and I found it interesting to follow Patti Smith's journey, but there was just something that wasn't quite pushing it to four-star territory for me. But as I said, still enjoyed it, just didn't absolutely love it, so 3.5 stars for this one. And the final book that I read this month is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. This is following two different storylines. One is following a woman who is trying to circumnavigate the globe and basically 
become a pilot all throughout her life as she goes towards this journey. And that story is taking place from like 1920s onwards, really the bulk of that story. And then we have the semi-present day where we have a film being made about this woman's journey and we're following the actress who is being cast to play this woman. So there's a really interesting contrast of two different characters and two different experiences and ultimately two different dreams going on here. We have the dream of our character trying to become a pilot and the dream of our actress who's trying to be taken a bit more seriously and feels really passionately about this role and what ends up happening is our actress is trying to dig around and find out more about what actually happened to our pilot because her story very much ended with a big question mark. I felt this was very beautiful and it really had a passion for experiencing things and seeing things and, and being who it is you want to be and not allowing society to, to restrict that in any way. I really loved seeing how things unfolded here and especially seeing a pilot Marion Graves' story taking shape. We see her throughout her whole life, starting from when her parents meet, which is a really interesting take because it really gives us a backstory to her. And I love that we as the reader get to go on that journey with her and find out how she becomes this dedicated, amazing pilot and, and who, who she is and who gets her there and the experiences that get her there and every struggle she's had along the way. This is definitely a very long book. I, I think it's deceptively long. It's nearly 700 pages, but I, I didn't expect it to be as long when I picked it up, but it's very thin pages. At times it was a little slower. However, I think that built towards a beautiful atmosphere and I never felt like it was out of place. The pacing, kept up with building the the atmosphere and building the the care that you have for these characters and the investment that you have for their journey for both characters both different narratives i really liked this and i'm really glad that i read this because this is one that i was recommended i think last year by a bookseller and i've been wanting to pick it up ever since but have been a little daunted by it but it was really good and it, i gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars because i was reading to film different types of videos over April. I feel like I've had a really varied reading month, so there's quite a few different books in there, but it's been a really good one. So these are the seven books that I read for April. Why is it always so hard to hold a stack of books up? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below how many books you read in April. You can subscribe to see more of my face on your feed and hit the little bell icon to be notified when I post. You can also find links down below to my Patreon and my online shop. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.